What's up, Brian fam? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. We're gonna take you guys through my upper body hypertrophy workout. Now, if you've been following along on the training vlogs, you saw this workout last week. We're gonna show you how I'm progressing into the next week, so week number two that you're watching of my new training cycle. We're also gonna discuss my new weight class. So it is official. I'm gonna go up to the 220 pound weight class. I'm not gonna make weight as a 198er anymore. Uh, I think I'm just too tall. So first off, I asked ab ab about this to uh, the YouTube audience. And I also asked our members on our private prime Instagram page, which by the way, if you sign up for any of our group coaching programs or just get a premium subscription, which is more affordable, uh, you can get access to all of our private videos and our private Instagram page. But on this page, I asked members if they want to see me in 198s or 220s. And actually most of them, to my surprise, said 220s. They just want to see me throw up a big ass total. And after talking about this with Dylan, uh, my coach, as well as Garrett Fear and a couple other people. Garrett Fear actually competes at a really high level in the 198s. He makes weight from about the same body weight I'm at. But after speaking to him, he kind of brought to my attention that, yes, I'm really strong in the 198s, but there's a high likelihood I'm not going to be able to make that weight another meter or two in just because I'm really tall and I got a lot of muscle mass on my frame. And we both agreed that currently because my total is probably only going to be about a top 25 or so in that weight class, it's better to just set up my long-term potential, which is clearly going to be the 220s because I have so much room to build into that weight class. And so I'm excited to actually go up a weight class and not worry about making weight, which means you guys are probably going to see a lot more PRs. If I can get this damn bench press back in check, we're going to have a big fucking total on meat day. And so I'm really excited about that. But anyway, let's take you guys through this workout. So again, starting off with dumbbell bench, you guys saw all the warmups there. I'm always going to do some dumbbell benching and overhead pressing and a little bit of rowing on this day before I get to my barbell bench work just because that shoulder is really banged up. And this seems to really alleviate the pain before um, or, or rather than starting with barbell bench, which seems to actually do the opposite. So literally, if I do these exercises with barbell bench first and then dumbbell bench and overhead press, as I go through the workout, the shoulder pain gets the gets worse. Currently doing it this way, the opposite happens. I start with a very minimal amount of pain, and then through these exercises, it actually gets better and warms up really well. I'm not exactly sure why that is. I talked about in the previous uh, video, analgesia, which is kind of um, the lack or, or the reduction of pain sensory feedback from exercise. So um, the mechanism is not really proposed yet. We don't exactly know how it works. There could be some effects from the stability, the dumbbell bench, as well as the stretching position I'm putting my shoulder into when I do the overhead press, which you guys will see, but it's hard to say. So anyway, I blew up the 120s there for, uh, I think it was a set of 10. I actually got a couple sets of 10 there. And then at the same time, I'm doing a superset with this row here. And this is actually the warm up. So uh, I like to warm up all these chest supported row variations with kind of one arm to really get the scapulas independently firing. It feels really good when you get that full stretch as well as a little bit of rotation to get the whole scapula moving and that serratus interior a little bit unlocked through that scap protraction. And so after I do this for some warm up reps, I throw on some more weight and then I go double arm, which I prefer for hypertrophy because um, really when you go single arm, it's a little bit more focused on uh, rotation of your spine and scapula health slash movement, but a little less focused on hypertrophy. I just want to stay in that sweet point where I'm really just maximizing scap retraction and also not cheating. When you go one arm, it's actually very easy to kind of use some momentum and load more weight on the bar than actually needed. So this keeps me a little bit more strict doing the double arm version. And I'm using that neutral grip to keep these a little bit more lat focused. So you can see there, I'm still getting a ton of upper back contraction with the lats. And we'll come back to another video here in a second to see a little bit more there. So I think these here are the 120s actually, uh, forgive me. I think the previous video were the 100 um, I don't know. You guys can look on the screen and figure it out. I'm kind of doing this, this video recording on the fly, but these were the one twenties here. And I got a, a nice couple sets in here of some really good reps and the, the pec was feeling good. The shoulders feeling good. I was getting a lot of contraction in my pecs. Dumbbell benching is probably one of my favorite exercises for pec hypertrophy. The reason why is because the, the way the dumbbells have to stay stacked over the elbow, it actually really removes the triceps from the movement. So because you can't, 
can't get lateral force transfer like the way you can on, say, a barbell bench press because your arms are stuck to this prefixed barbell in space, you actually get a huge removal of the triceps from a basic physics standpoint doing dumbbell bench. I have a whole video explaining the physics of this. You guys can go back on the channel and see it. But just understand that dumbbell bench really makes it isolated towards the pecs and takes a lot of it off of the triceps. So look at the scap. See how the shoulders still pin back really hard even though you're using that neutral grip? That's going to allow the upper back to work really well with the lats. So whenever we have a neutral grip and the elbows are more to the uh, sides and we're kind of tucked in our elbow position, you're definitely going to buy a shoulder extension, which is going to be more lat dominant. But that doesn't mean you want to skimp out on getting that upper back a little bit more activated. So it really, really helps out there. Uh, this was one of my last sets here. So I think I did three sets of the dumbbell bench, three, maybe four working sets if you count that first set of hundreds. But basically, I took the hundreds and I did that as kind of a warm up slash feeler set. Then I did the 120s for a couple sets of, I think it was like eight to 10. And then I finished off with this last set. I think I got 10 here or so with the hundreds, really clean pauses. And by this point, my forearms were crazy pumped. My shoulders and packs were crazy pumped and the back was pumped from all the rowing and I had a lot of blood flow. And so this felt great. And it's kind of crazy to me how much this doesn't seem to affect my bench strength by the time I get to the bench press. So it just kind of goes to show you guys that you're a little bit more resilient than you think. Sometimes people think they're going to get tired from doing like one or two extra warm up reps on a barbell bench. I'm basically doing a whole ass workout before I get to my barbell bench and I feel fine. So watch this OHP. You guys were wondering, why is he flaring out his elbows like that? I kind of briefly mentioned in the previous videos, but for whatever reason, when I do the overhead press like this, with this extreme internal rotation, it stretches the hell out of my pec minor, my shoulder, and kind of that whole clavicular area of the shoulder and upper pec where it there's something deep in that left shoulder that feels really good when I do this. And it seems to have direct carryover to the reduction of pain when I get to the barbell bench. I've tried doing this without the overhead press. So the other day I tried to go straight to the barbell bench after dumbbell benching and it did not feel as good. So I think it's very specific to this OHP, how I'm getting a nice little effect there. Uh, and as always, I superset it because I just love antagonistic supersets. It's great in the off season for hypertrophy as well as work workout efficiency. So how long you're in the gym. And then lastly, your work capacity gets hugely improved from this. So I was doing really strict pull-ups here. You can see it's basically with a tempo, just focusing on contraction, getting the chin above the bar, trying to keep my abs engaged and really just working on overall mind muscle connection since I'm really detrained from those. Uh, eventually I'm going to speed them up, but for now I'm taking them really easy easy and making sure that like kind of Terry's minor or whatever uh, area gets irritated in my shoulder slash kind of armpit region doesn't get bothered uh, from going too heavy. Now moved on to the barbell bench here and you'll see I have uh, my legs in a normal leg drive position. So I wanted to see if this felt okay and it definitely didn't. So again, another theme here seems to be that for whatever reason, when I use a toe arch, I seem to get a lot more uh, pain reduction when I'm performing the bench. So literally just pulling my legs back and going into a toe arch like this seems to make my shoulders feel better. I think it's because my scapula can get more uh, depressed. It seems to really help me depress the scapula. And for whatever reason, that depression of the scapula is what seems to alleviate the pain right now, which is really fucking weird because when the shoulder pain first showed up, originally scapula elevation and protraction made it feel better. So, so pain is really complex. It's a really confusing thing, especially chronic pain. But for whatever reason, this feels good and I'm sticking with it. Now, admittedly, I don't like toe arching. Um, even though it's only allowed in the USPA and kind of looked at by powerlifters as like a cheating arch, at least powerlifters who compete in the USAPL, in my opinion, most people, including myself, are weaker like this. I do much better with my heels on the ground. I can get much better leg drive. Uh, I will say I'm a little bit more stable like this, but I think my power output is definitely reduced. And since my bench press is already stable, this doesn't really seem to help me, but because it feels healthy, I'm going to stick with it. I'm hoping eventually I can go back to just a normal arch with my heels on the ground and feet a little bit more in front of me. But for now, I'm rolling with this because it feels really, really good. And then here is the top set. 
243 pounds here. Uh, I think this is 243. Yeah, 243 for a nice set of 10. So the first set was 220 for 10. And then I got up to this 243 for 10, really focusing on pauses. I want, even though I'm doing high reps here, I really want to make sure I'm pausing on the chest because specificity matters. If you neglect the pause, you're neglecting training that isometric strength on the chest. And a lot of people, when they see sets of 10 or eight or whatever on the bench press or higher reps, they oftentimes think this means like I shouldn't do a pause because it's such high rep, it's going to gas you out. And that is kind of true, but that doesn't negate the fact that you're just skimping on training that isometric on the chest. So I really want to get good at pausing because that's what I'm going to have to do in competition. Therefore, I'm going to do all my sets with the barbell pause. Now, not everyone does this. In fact, my coach Dylan, uh, he doesn't do this himself. And I kind of always give him shit about this, but admittedly, he's bent some pretty big numbers. So it seems to work for him. And I think this is somewhat individually um, kind of or one of those things that you would decide on individually. But I'll say for the vast majority of people, I personally would preach to pause every rep with a good clean pause because it's just going to ensure that at the very worst, yeah, maybe use slightly less weight, but you're overly prepared for competition instead of what is that extra, you know, 5, 10, 15 pounds on the bar. If you did a more touch and go on the high rep sets, what's that really going to do for you in the long run, especially if you're neglecting specificity when it comes to the movement? The way I see it, it would kind of like be doing like a squat that's really borderline versus going to full depth. I, I feel like that's kind of in the same uh, group, and I can use that as an analogy to paint the picture that you probably don't want to neglect that specificity. Now, as always, after this, I was doing some uh, push-ups with some load on my back. Notice the scap protraction at the top. So these are a lot harder when you get true end range protraction. So you see how that scapula really protracts. The pecs contract together really, really hard. And then the bottom, I get that extreme extension. I can do these without that protraction up to three 45 pound plates on my back. But when I'm getting that scat protraction, these get really hard, especially if these are done towards the end of my workout after all that high volume benching and dumbbell benching. So did a few sets there. And then lastly, I finished up with some tricep push downs, really just focused on um, getting like a nice pump here and getting the elbows moving and healthy. Uh, in, in past training cycles, when I go too hard on these tricep push downs too soon, I can really fuck my elbows up, especially during high volume phases. I have really sensitive elbows and I find that weirdly the single joint isolation movements seem to irritate them the most. So kind of taking the set easy. This was my warm up set. I don't think I filmed the top set, unfortunately, uh, but I did go a little bit heavier than this. But you guys will see I do a lot of warming up. So I did the warm up set there, went a little heavier, do more reps. I don't really rest here. I kind of purposely pre-exhaust myself before I get to my top set. That way I'm staying healthy. And that is pretty much the video. So I'll let you guys finish out the juicy uh, B-roll and I'll catch you guys in the next one.